president also emphasized the need for African leaders to ensure that democracy, good governance and economic institutions work together. Tinibu said his administration took bold economic policies to propel Nigeria's economy out of the downturns occasioned by multiple shocks in the global economy. Today we gather as one family, united in our quest for a stronger, more prosperous and more peaceful continent. As we meet, we must also remember that our continent faces numerous challenges across economic, humanitarian, and social spheres. However, I take consolation from the fact that we all recognize the potential we possess to overcome these challenges, and we are ready to take the necessary measures to translate our immense opportunities in natural resources and human capital into growth, innovation, and collaboration. This caucus offers a vital platform for us to share experiences, forge partnerships, and chart a collective chart power. Africa's story is one of resilience, creativity, and hope. Indeed, we have made significant strides in recent years with many of our nations achieving remarkable economic growth, social progress, and political stability. Yet, obstacles such as increasing poverty, rising debt across many countries, inequality and conflicts continue to widen the gap between our continent and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals. This is indeed a matter of serious concern. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this caucus meeting provides us with the opportunity to examine and discuss the main challenges and strategies for fostering inclusive growth and sustainable development in Africa. By ensuring that democracy, good governance, and economic institutions work together, we can improve the quality of life of people across the continent. I find the theme of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Olayemi Kadoso, emphasized the significance of the meeting. He said Africa stands at a crossroad with unprecedented opportunities for development alongside significant challenges. It's particularly significant as it marks the first time this all-important African caucus meeting is being held on our soil. The theme facilitating intra-Africa trade, catalyst for sustainable economic growth in Africa, is indeed timely and fitting. Africa stands at a crossroads with unprecedented opportunities for development alongside significant challenges. Speaking virtually, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, WTO, Dr. Ngozi okonjo Uwela, provided a comprehensive analysis of Africa's economic situation and potential. okonjo Uwela, who emphasized the need for greater regional integration, posted the United Nations data for 2021 as saying only 13% of Africa's goods trade was internal. Data for 2021, only 13% of Africa's goods trade was intra-regional compared to 21% for Southeast Asia, 39% for the US, Mexico and Canada, and 60% for the European Union. Africa accounts for only about 3% of global goods trade and an even lower proportion of global services trade. Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohammed, stressed the importance of trade facilitation, the Pan African payment system, and settlement. She also emphasized the need for increased access for energy and connectivity. Today, we will have the chance to discuss many strategies for supporting intra Africa trade. One is trade facilitation. An estimated $9 billion in additional trade can be unlocked through liberalizing trade on the continent as envisaged under the African Continental Free Trade Area. Yet, we could unlock at least five times that volume by addressing other non-tariff frictions, streamlining and digitalizing border procedures, harmonizing regulations, and investing in transport corridors. The meeting with representatives from all African member countries of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank Group aims to address key economic issues confronting the continent with a focus on promoting trade within Africa to foster sustainable development. 
Mukhtar Kasim, Liberty News.